my questions. Many I have, I have many questions. For about two years, a friend recommended me your video and your sadhana. Last year, I really tried to to do it. Like I would ask for everything I would do. Like, should I eat this? Should I take a shower and try to find this feeling? And I guess it worked for me or I could do it a bit. Well, he told me it's only a binary uh, thing and everything I would hear or think might not be that. So I wanted to check. And I have a very simple example. Last night, uh, I have a problem with electricity and I woke up in the night and I see this button and I knew I have to go there and press that button and it works. So I, I try to figure out is it the same Google that you're talking about or are there different part of the ego or spirit that is working together and also giving other informations? Okay, let's put some order in the mess. <laughs> Thank you. What one needs to understand to start with is that there has been a lot of confusion in the world of spirituality, of enlightenment, self-realization, whatever those goals may be. And that is because that has been the nature of the conceptual. Humankind transitioned from a... from a more emotional state into a more conceptual state as humankind progressed. And the result was that there were lots and lots of different concepts that appeared and arose. And they conflicted very often. So you have spirit, you have spirits, you have soul, you have source, you have various names and words for different things. And then you have the question, are angel spirits? Am I getting dream information from the soul? Am I getting it from spirits? What am I receiving intuitions from or information from? And if you can try to look at photography as an example for what I'm trying to say, in the early hours of photography with the daguerreotype, you had these images that were very, very blurred. Or now, even when the internet fails or when, when there's a problem with the signal, you see the same thing, but you see it very blurred. And then if you have a sharp instrument like a, like a Leica or one of these new phones, then you're able to see a very clear image of the very same thing. That is the same with all these nebulous descriptions and words and concepts and ideas that have accumulated in the human vocabulary for spiritual experiences over the millennia. To put some order into it now, what is said here is that there is at the center of the being, something which you would call the center of the being. There is a, a source of impulse, of instruction, setting you in the right direction. When I say right direction, what I mean is the actions that will bring you joy versus the actions that bring you suffering. If you consult with the center of your being and what we call the soul or source or truth or even love, that center of the being could be anything. It could be a, a protein emerging from your genes, it could be one piece of the universal soul. It could be the wings of an angel. It doesn't matter what it is. But what we do know is that there is something impulsing. It's impulsing. 
and it's continuously impulsing. And this sadhana is to tune into that, to move into that, to tune in beyond the noise and the cacophony of the ego, what one calls the ego, which is actually all the socialization that you have gone through, all that nonsense that has been slapped onto you, some sense as well, because we need a bit of ego to maneuver life as well, but we don't need it all. And so, as you learn to tune in, you try to, you try to listen to that, to that very, very, one could call it ancient, impulse deep, deep within, beyond all that society is telling you. Is that a spirit? Well, seen from one point of view, it is spirit, because if you describe the soul as one drop of that universal ocean, then each of those drops is a spirit, which when you drop the body, moves on to become one with the Cosmic Spirit, or to, on its own, move on. These are all, all, all of these are conceptual discourses, they are concepts, they are created by humans in order to attempt to put order in what they consider to be chaos, which isn't chaos because it's the thinking that wants to put order in something which you can't put order in. So rather than trying to think it through, what could this be, what is it, what is that, is it this, is it that? No, 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 that's not the way to go. It is to experience it materially. You know, materially, you feel it in the body. And how do you experience it materially? By quieting the entire system down, focusing on your breathing and moving inward to see, to feel, what is this impulse? And what you will find out is, and, and not surprisingly so, it is a binary impulse. So you can actually ask the Master of your Being, the Soul, the Antar Guru, the inner residing Guru, you can actually tune in and ask anything and you get a binary response. It just doesn't sound incense sticky and, and poetry and, and all of that, but it's so pure and simple and clear and clean and you have it within, you're carrying your Master within and that is where you go, that is where you go. And as far as the external Guru is concerned, that's a guide, that's not the Soul. The Guru is here to point you to that Soul. The Guru is here to show you that Soul. The Guru is not the Soul. The Guru is here to point you to that Soul. So the answers actually are coming from there, from within. The, the problem is that that trust has to be there, that you know, that that source of knowledge is within you, you have to develop that trust, that when that answer comes, it is the answer, it's a yes or a no, it's binary, positive, negative. And it may not sound very poetic, but it is... it's... it's so beautifully simple, you know, it's just so simple. It's simple, the whole thing is simple. It's about collecting yourself, centering yourself and going within and asking that crucial question. And yes, after a while, what happens? You don't have to ask those questions anymore because the system moves into a state of of surrender, you know? You start to... you start to bend, you bend, bend. You're in tune with that Source, you're just in tune with it. 
And then when you're in tune with it, you don't have to ask anymore. It is a state of Self-Realization. And from that state, and in that state, the entire system just moves in action, in action, in action, doing this, and that, and this, and that, and this thing, and that thing, whatever the body needs to do in this lifetime. And yes, there are ups, and there are downs, and there's suffering, and not, but that response to all that suffering is different. It doesn't touch you that way, because you know that you are an instrument of this Source within, the Soul. And it doesn't matter what it is, and where it comes from, and what its nature is. If you want to put some order into the whole thing, the way to put the order is not to think, but to do. Not to ruminate, but to actually tune in. And I mean, if someone says that they tune in and they feel nothing is there, it's all empty, it's because they haven't gone beyond that barrier of religion. Religion tells you that the Divine is outside. So if the Divine is outside, how are you going to tune in? You are going to meet with emptiness. And then you pierce beyond it. You pierce beyond all that you have been taught, which makes you dependent on something outside of yourself. Anything that makes you dependent on anything outside yourself is intrinsically taking you out of yourself. So you need to move into yourself, in, 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 here. It's not empty there. It's full, it's fullness. And one can say it cold and, and almost hard. One can say it is the source of knowledge for this system, it is binary in nature, tune into it and get your answer. And yes, there's a lot of joy and beauty around those experiences. I mean, people in an ashram, or people in a group, or people in a Sangha, they are also in there, because there is a certain joy in being around people who are on that same path. It doesn't, of course, mean that, you know, it's any different from anywhere else, but at least there is that common interest. So that impulse, that is the Master within. Don't try to question too much what it is, first go in and start to feel. And if you got an impulse to switch off the light and it was the right thing, why question from where it comes? Just flow with it, trust yourself. In any case, you have nothing to lose, because you make mistakes anyways. So if you trust yourself and make a mistake, it's better than not trusting yourself and making a mistake, isn't it? So, don't try to question too much, just trust and move forward with a, with a sense of courage. And then suddenly miracles start to unfold and reveal themselves. Yes, thank you. Uh, I think it's... Um clear for me now. I know when I don't follow it, it's very bad for me. If I tell me I have to go to this place and I do it, then it's like really miracle happening. Yeah, I guess the person in me who wants to understand, wants to check. That is your more... ego. That's mm -hmm. the ego. The ego is destructive. It destroys the processes. It doesn't, it doesn't grow it into something. It's all this thinking, and the more you try to find out what is it and how is it, the less the miracle will unfold. Because then you start questioning, yeah, but is it really, is it really like that? Is it true? No, it can't be. Because that's what you've been taught. You've been, you've grown up, you have a genetic inheritance of, of relying on outside yourself. And the interesting thing is, you rely on everything outside yourself to give you something, not to give into it. 
So it's the government, it's God, it's the king, it's the it's the husband, it's the neighbor, it's the, the school teacher, it's everything. And it's always about what can I get from there? But the whole point is what can I give into it? And that's what strengthens people when they give into something, not when they're taking, but when they're giving, that's when the strength comes. So it's all twisted, you know. If you take God out of a human being and put that God up somewhere on a mountain with a big beard, then what do you expect after that? So it's about taking that God from that, from that cloud up there, putting it back where it belongs. It's an it, not a he. Putting it back where it belongs and then being in communion, being in, in a trust relationship. Trust yourself, trust that you have the ability to know beyond what society tells you, you have the ability to know what the truth of a situation is. And from that trust emerges giving, and from that giving emerges the absolute receiving, which is joy, joy in living. Yes. Thank you very much. It gives me the strength to tune in to that and clearness. Of that.